So between the PlayStation 5 reveal event and the PC gaming show, which ultimately gave us Persona 4 Golden being ported over to Steam, I've been uploading a lot of video game reaction-based and discussion-based videos over the last week. Uh, and this is another one pertaining to Kingdom Hearts of all things. And I honestly didn't think I'd be recording anything in 2020 regarding KH3, especially with uh, Kingdom Hearts 3 being officially wrapped up with the Remind DLC earlier this year. And obviously, I don't really cover uh, the content of Union Cross and, you know, everything like that. Obviously, they announced Dark Road a little while back, but there have been some new developments regarding Union Cross. It's getting its final chapter or final chapters in the coming weeks, and uh, a new title has been released, officially released, because there were leaks, uh, there were data mining bits that were going out on the internet over the last couple of days, uh, which led a lot of people to assume that we're going to be getting a rhythm-based, music-based Kingdom Hearts game, which I assume that that's what this is, um, you know, especially since it's from Square and they've done things like the Final Fantasy Theater Rhythm game. Uh, it's kind of ironic, too, because because I'm a big fan of Persona 5, Persona 5 Royal, and I actually played through Persona 5 Dancing in Starlight, which is a, uh, a rhythm-based, music-based uh, Persona 5 game, which is super cool, and it's kind of like uh, fan service, and it also has like a story to it. So I honestly think that's a, that's what they're doing with Kingdom Hearts, and Kingdom Hearts has so many bangers from the OST tracks to obviously um, you know all the music that Utada Hikaru does, which I doubt that's going to be there because you know DMCA strikes and all that stuff, especially for people who let's play and do like upload videos on YouTube and stuff like that. But yeah, so I'm going to be watching the trailer or trailers that have recently come out because, like I said, Union Cross is kind of popping off, Dark Roads is being set up. Uh, I know that they announced. Uh, I haven't really looked through the details of it, but I know that they have been doing a lot of stuff to promote and get Dark Roads up on its feet as Union Cross is closing down, or not closing down, but the Union Cross storyline is ending, presumably so the Dark Roads storyline, which is between, you know, mainly the the, the tale and the, 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 the legacy of Master Xehanort, uh, starting from his youth with Ericus and Scala at Kylum with their masters. They've revealed a bunch of other Union Cross members. A lot of their names are hard to remember. I think Homund or Hormund and Bragi is the only one that I remember because if you add an X and you rearrange the letters, you get Zigbar. Or uh, if you have his original letters rearranged, it could be Brag. And so that could be one of Lucius' previous lives that was watching over the Keyblade of the Master of Masters. So it could also be a tale of Lucius' uh, you know, legacy up till the point of where we see him at the end of Kingdom Hearts 3. But, uh, but yeah, uh, I'm going to be checking that out. I'm going to be checking out a few other things. I think Square Japan launched three trailers on their website. So I already have some ideas of what it's going to be, uh, a rhythm-based Kingdom Hearts game. I just want to see the trailer, the gameplay, if there's any cutscenes or plot um, to be had, because obviously every Kingdom Hearts game is important to the overall story, and I've played every Kingdom Hearts game with the exception of the mobile game. I've just followed like the story stuff. But uh, but yeah, I'm sorry for rambling and all that. Uh, as most of you guys probably know, I'm a big Kingdom Hearts fan, although I don't really produce Kingdom Hearts content because I feel like it's not... I feel like I couldn't do it justice, and it's so late into the game to kind of jump into that now. But ultimately, I, I'm a big fan. I played and loved 3. I even loved the DLC more. I think it justified a lot of the endgame things that happened. Obviously, Yazora, um, you know, and that whole storyline that's going on when the Mora resurrecting in some capacity the remnants of Final Fantasy Versus 13 is really exciting. Uh, and Nomura did say that we'd be getting, that they have two Kingdom Hearts games being worked on, one of which we'd be getting very soon. Uh, so I assume this is also it. And I don't know if the second one was the Dark Roads mobile game or if he's referring to Kingdom Hearts 4 or a, a mainline title in the future. Future. But uh, yeah, with all that said, uh, sorry for this long intro. I just wanted to kind of preface my thoughts, my knowledge, and ultimately everything regarding Kingdom Hearts before we jump in. As always, thank you guys so much for your support. As always, leave any thoughts you might have in the comments. And without further ado, let us begin. All right, so we're on the Square Enix Japanese website. And yeah, so they they launched three Kingdom Hearts trailers about nine hours ago. I got first word of this this morning in my Discord server. Uh, however, I was really busy this morning. I had to record a couple of videos uh, with uh, my girlfriend and a friend of ours for a video that she's doing on her channel. But uh, yeah, so we have a Kingdom Hearts 2020 trailer. We have the Kingdom Hearts Dark Roads trailer. And I assume this is the official launch of Kingdom Hearts Melody of Memory title announcement trailer so it is uh, essentially a rhythm based game but if anything we're gonna jump into this and uh see what we got here so i'm gonna check out all three of these because like i said they have a dark roads one which i mean that's basically going to be the end of the union cross chapter and the beginning of the dark the dark roads chapter so let's check this out hey oh my god the entire series dude there's like 11 kingdom hearts oh 
Kingdom Hearts second series. Wow. There's like multiple phases to this shit. Look at that. The entire arc. Ooh. This sounds like the orchestra version of Kingdom Hearts. Oh! Kingdom Hearts 2020! So, are we getting the game this year, too? I assume? Surprise, it's called Kingdom Hearts 20. Oh, I think this was before they had the official trait, like the official title. Oh! It is the orchestra. Yo, that freaking conductor commands the room. Alright, here we go. Kingdom Hearts Union Cross. Oh! We got Brain! Scald! Oh, Lorium! Dude, this shit's go popping off right now. Ava. Strelitzia. Freaking Ven. Master of Masters. Lushu. Freaking Maleficent. The whole gang. Yep, I remember this. Damn, dude. The Kingdom Hearts 1 machine. Yeah, okay, so they're just re-promoting it. Damn. Are they going through, like, the entire timeline? So that's, like, the earliest in the timeline. And then eventually the Keyblade Graveyard. Like, not the Key... Well, the Keyblade... The first Keyblade War of the Keyblade Graveyard. Okay. I see you. Why did he become the Seeker of Darkness? Is that the player? Okay, okay, okay. So this is the end of... Kingdom Hearts Key. Oh, shit. Oh, the Scala music! Yeah, so this dude, here they all are, Broggy's right there. Walking in. I don't, I have to remember all these fucking characters' names. Damn, Xehanort, Ericus, and then a bunch of these new members. So yeah, so this is playing up on, not playing up on, but it's, it's adding on to the Union Cross um, plot line. And I think it's from the same mobile. It's like an expansion of the of the mobile game. So you, you basically don't need. You basically probably gonna have to download an update for it. But nothing from there. Oh shit, dude! His past self. Oh my god! It's all about Xehanort now. Kingdom Hearts Union Dark Road. Oh shit! The twenty second. It officially launches. It's in a couple of days. Actually, it's like within a week. Ah, the Kingdom Hearts 3, Dearly Beloved. I think this is my favorite Kingdom Hearts... I feel, I think this is my favorite version of Dearly Beloved. <laughs> oh, the sound... Finally! Are you releasing it already? Damn, dude. Also, I hope this doesn't get copyright blocked on YouTube, because all the music. That'd be pretty ridiculous. Hey, Tangled. These tracks are already, like, iconic. I've played KH3 so many times. Kingdom Hearts! Kingdom Hearts. Oh, is this the Tsum Tsum game? Oh, no! Oh, this is it! Yo! Oh, my God! This is... Yo, we get to Traverse Town! We haven't got a Traverse Town since KH. Well, since probably like technically Chain of Memories and Recoded. Oh, how are you gonna play this? <laughs> Dude, the rhythm. Wow. Roxas' theme. Boom. Damn, Night of Fate! So we're going through all of the stages. Dude, this literally reminds me of... Oh, you get to do the boss fights through the music! Melody of Memory. Melody of Memory, there you go. Oh? Oh? There's more?! Whoa! The machine! Young Xehanort! Well, Apprentice Xehanort! Kyrie! That's what just... Mask! Is that the master? Oh! <laughs> All the stars! 
Oh my god, that's the name with Star, I think! <laughs> Kairi's fighting the master of masters? What? Dude, I... They... I swear to God, if they fucking jebate us in this game, and, like, he reveals his hood and then that's it, credits roll, I'm gonna be so fucking pissed, dude. Holy fuck, man. So, right there, Kingdom Hearts... Melody of Memory, M-O-M, -M, Master of Masters. I'm pretty sure we're gonna get the reveal of this man. Dude, oh my god, it's coming to all sit platforms, PS4, Xbox One, and Nintendo Switch! It's the first Kingdom Hearts game on the Switch, holy fuck. This seems like something that would have come out, like, on the DS or the 3DS at the time, you know, they, you know, Square has always had a close relationship with Nintendo when it comes to... Um, you know, when it mainly comes to the, uh, Nintendo systems, like Chain of Memories, uh, Days, uh, Recoded, Dream Drop Distance, so I think porting something like this to the Switch is understandable, uh, especially if you want to play or listen to the music on the go. I think that's so fucking cool, because the Persona 5 dancing game is the exact same theater-based, not theater-based, but, like, rhythm-based, but it's only, da it's, like, literally just, like, flex dancing, whereas this, you kind of are going back through the adventures of, I think there were some new worlds in there, too, I saw Traverse Town, that was the only one that I recognized, and then, obviously, some of the other worlds, like, between Roxas, like, Tra uh, Twilight Town, and, like, even the boss fights of Kingdom Hearts 2, but it was KH1 Sora fighting Kingdom Hearts 2 Xemnas, in the world that never was like the final kh2 boss fight which was fucking crazy that was so cool so it's again it's a melody of rhythm and this this kind of looks like the chain of memories logo like the like the color even looks somewhat similar so i wonder if it's like a parallel because we're going through all of the me like melody of memory chain of memories this one's based on Kyrie. nomine is heavily based or heavily heavily utilized and introduced in chain of memories and then it fucking shows like some crazy shit. So I think this is gonna be like Kyrie's turn, but it sucks because it's not like a, a, a traditional like Kingdom Hearts four styled like KH three styled like like what the DLC gave us with her. So I really hope she develops and grows here. Is she going to the, the final world to go after to find Sora where he is? Because that's technically where he ended up with him and Yazora, depending on the ending. So yeah, look at that man. I think that's. That's Kyrie, especially that little cry, like the like the like the cry, like the worrisome cry as she was, you know, locked at the gate there. And that's where she's from. The Heartless were all after her. It seems like, or it looks like, it looks like Xemnas took her and put her in that chamber. And now, like, she's the main focus here. Sora's gone, all the stars gather together, including Yazora's girl, the nameless star. Sora's back. Is she gonna fight the master of masters? Oh. Oh my goodness. This might be Kyrie's moment to kind of just pop off. Sora's not in the picture. And again, I. It pains me to say that, but I feel like that is kind of. Uh, she is getting kind of robbed of that glory because of the fact that you know Sora and Riku were kind of flushed out in bolt and playable games Kyrie only really got to shine from the player's perspective in the DLC of the last part of Kingdom Hearts 3 so if they, even if this is just cutscene stuff, you know what I mean? I can I, I can completely see Kyrie doing this, especially with how she showcased herself in the DLC, fighting alongside Sora against Master, Zay Master Zayanort. So this entire thing is really exciting. I'm actually looking forward to the... Um, like, not really playing this, but honestly just getting the story updates, and that's only what I really follow the mobile games for. I'm not a mobile game fan by any stretch of the imagination, so unfortunately, this is something that I'm going to miss for the most part. But, uh, you know, it, at least for the story, Xehanort's story, uh, Lushu's story, Ericus's story, and everything else in between, all of these new characters as well. Like, what happened to these guys? You know what I mean? Like, they're all... None of them are in the picture anymore, so did they all die? Was there another Keyblade War that happened? Did these guys, like, go off into the future or the past or... 
or are these do these people eventually become the foretellers or are they incarnations of the foretellers is that actually Lushu right there because he's kind of like chilling the one with like the flipped hair that's Bragi so that his name rearranged would be uh Brag or if you add an x in there and rearrange Zigbar uh and obviously Lushu took on different faces and different aliases over the years um since the initial actually no this would this is after the never mind about the foretellers this is after the foretellers um so i don't know man like a lot of these characters look really interesting I, i'm just wondering what's going to happen with them i really hope they make a movie out of this similar to how they did with kingdom hearts um unchained key um i mean sorry key back cover uh like they did with key back cover like an a good hour-long movie of these characters and the fate that befalls them or befalls their master or how Z how xehanort ends up becoming like he didn't become the successor but he got the master's keyblade we didn't see the master odin which is all of their masters i assume or a keyblade master presiding in this area or maybe it is the master of all of them in the one who announces uh Ericus the successor uh, i just have to follow this a bit more closely but this sets up for a lot i wonder if that's a book of prophecy on the table you got the chessboard on the back there that xehanort and Ericus are playing on throughout the events of kingdom hearts 3 and um yeah this is also really exciting too but clearly and then look at that we're going through all the areas olympus coliseum damn dude mm, mm, mm. yeah i really like this <laughs> you got the sea salt gang you got the knight of fate at no destiny islands and this is cool right here i'm like holy shit kh1 sora is doing a boss fight the music as the boss fight that's so cool but obviously this right here this is like the big shit this is the stuff that i'm really curious about regarding Kyrie. so apprentice xehanort apprentice xehanort is putting somebody in this chamber. My only two thoughts could be either Aqua or like her armor. I don't fucking know. Or that was Kyrie and he did something to Kyrie in the early days of Kingdom Hearts. Or maybe that's where she was and she ended up getting transported to Destiny Island because it's like, how the fuck? Like, that's never been explained how she ended up getting off of this place where, where she was from, Radiant Garden, and making her way to the Destiny Islands. Damn, dude. Yeah, and then this would be Kyrie running to the gate, being scared. Wow. And then I think like this is like jogging her memory or something. It's memory to some extent. So Kyrie's going to be remembering some past memories. These guys are probably going to help her do it. And some of the wise is back in the picture. Riku is with Kyrie. So they found their way here. Sora's back in the picture. Kyrie, you know, her heart found, her, found its way to him. I really hope, I just really hope they fucking, I really hope they don't debate us on this Master of Master shit, because like, Melody of Memory, M-O-M, -M, Master of Masters, I feel like this is the perfect, I don't think that this is the perfect time, I think Kingdom Hearts 4 would be, you know what I mean, they debated us with his name in the DLC too, he was like, my name is, and then it fades out so you don't hear what he says, but I wonder if his name is relevant too, I don't know, um... But yeah, that's uh, that's kind of all of my thoughts. So we're getting another Kingdom Hearts game this year. Very exciting to play it, uh, just because I, I, you know, I'm a big Kingdom Hearts fan. I obviously have to get caught up with the Dark Road stuff and the end of the Union Cross stuff during that final story update. But uh, yeah, like I'm already kind of diving into a bunch of different games this year. Obviously, I'm going through Persona 5 Royal. I want to check out Persona 4 Golden because I've never played that. The Last of Us Part 2 comes out later this week. You got the PlayStation 5 reveal event with that console coming out at the end of the year with all of those games like the Spider-Man game, Holiday 2020. This supposedly coming out in 2020. I'll cross my fingers. I don't, I wouldn't be surprised if it gets pushed back, but you know, if, if everything regarding Square and regarding their schedule and obviously the events of the world are going on now, this could easily be like an early 2021 game. But yeah, more Kingdom Hearts. Not that I was expecting it, but it's still kind of cool. It's going to be a lot less over the top than Kingdom Hearts 3, clearly. But the fact that they're e able to get on another Kingdom Hearts game this year just shows that, you know, the production is probably a lot easier than something like KH3. And the graphics look really great. They're probably going to upscale everything. So everything's going to look really pristine and 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 gorgeous looking for, for this to come out. And obviously, it's all the jams of Kingdom Hearts. Kingdom Hearts has some, like, absolute bangers, some really heart-wrenching uh, tracks and OSTs. So I can't wait to check it out. But ultimately... That'll, those are my thoughts. That is my reaction to all of this information. I think 
these other trailers are essentially what I already saw. Yeah, so these trailers are basically what we already saw, but standalone. So that one was just the huge chunk of everything. And then these are all individual and separate. So we kind of just banged it all out at once. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, leave your thoughts in the comment section. And I will see you all in the next video. Take care.